health care reform is an important issue in America today. Unfortunately, many people are exposed to a limited perspective. I think you need to know about alternatives that work. Alternatives that are consistent with the American heritage of freedom. Hello, I'm Dr. Arthur Astorino, Chairman of Americans for Free Choice in Medicine. I'm going to take you now to one of our national town hall meetings on health care reform. This program features Dr. Leonard Peikoff. Dr. Peikoff is a noted philosopher, lecturer, and author of many books, including Ominous Parallels, The End of Freedom in America. Dr. Peikoff. Good morning. <clears throat> Most people who oppose socialized medicine do so on the grounds that it's moral and well-intentioned, but impractical. In other words, it's a noble idea which just somehow does not work. I do not agree with that approach. Of course, socialized medicine or government control of health care, which is the same thing, is impractical. It does not work, but it is impractical because it is immoral. This is not a case of noble in theory, but of failure in practice. It's a case of vicious in theory, and therefore a disaster in practice. So I'm going to... <clears throat> I'm going to leave it to others today to concentrate on the practical problems which are legion in the, in the Clinton health plan, and I want to focus on the moral issue at stake. So long as people believe that this plan is noble, there is no way to fight it. You cannot stop a noble plan, not if it really is noble. The only way you can defeat it is to unmask it, to show that it's the very opposite of noble. And then at least we have a fighting chance. Now what is morality in this context? The American concept of it is officially stated in the Declaration of Independence, which upholds man's unalienable individual rights. The term rights, notice, is a moral. It's a moral, not just a political term. It tells us that a certain course of behavior is right, sanctioned, proper, a prerogative to be respected by others, not interfered with, and that anyone who violates a man's rights is wrong, morally wrong, unsanctioned, evil. Now, our only rights, our only rights, the American viewpoint continues, are the rights to life, liberty, private property, and the pursuit of happiness. That's it. According to the Founding Fathers, we are not born with the right to a trip to Disneyland, or a meal at McDonald's, or a kidney dialysis, nor with the 18th century equivalent of these things. We have certain specific rights, and only these. And why? All legitimate rights, if you notice, have one thing in common. They are rights to action rights to action, not to rewards from other people. The American rights, the original American rights, impose no obligations on other people, merely the negative obligation to leave you alone. The system guarantees you the chance to work for what you want, not to be given it without effort by somebody else. The right to life, for example, does not mean that your neighbors have to feed and clothe you. It means that you have the right to earn your food and clothes yourself, if necessary, by a very difficult struggle, and that no one can forcibly stop your struggle for these things or steal them from you once you have achieved them. In other words, you have the right to act and to keep the results of your action, the products you make, to keep them or trade them with others if you wish, but you have no right to the actions or products of others except on terms to which they voluntarily agree. To take one more example, the right to the pursuit of happiness is precisely that. The right to the pursuit, to a certain type of action on your part, not to any guarantee that other people will make you happy or even try to do so. Otherwise, there would be no liberty in the country. If your mere desire for something, anything, imposes a duty on other people to satisfy you, then they have no choice in their lives, no say in what they do. <clears throat> they have no liberty. They cannot pursue their happiness. Your so-called right to happiness at their expense 
means that they become rightless serfs. In other words, your slaves. Your right to anything, anything at all, at the expense of others, means that they thereby become rightless. And that is why the United States system defines rights as it does, as strictly the rights to action. This was the approach that made the United States the first free country in all world history. And soon afterwards, as a result, the greatest country in history, the richest and most powerful. It became the most powerful because its view of rights made it the most moral. It was the country of individualism and personal independence.